What's up, everybody? Yvonne with Trout's Fly Fishing. Apologize for our absence here on YouTube, but we wanted to talk about what's going on in Cheeseman Canyon, give you a little update uh, a couple of week and a half, two weeks after this big flash flood that happened on July 31st. <clears throat> so I went in on Monday, grabbed some footage. We're going to review what happened on July 31st and sort of where we stand now and where we're going to, where, uh, where we're looking to next, you know? Let's talk about Cheeseman Canyon. Right, we're going to try to make this as uh, short, succinct as possible. So, July 31st, 4 p.m., what happened? Well, we're going to take a look at some footage from Pat Dorsey. A big afternoon thunderstorm dumped two and a half inches of rain on the canyon and in the surrounding areas. That impressive amount of rain caused uh, flows in the canyon to bump from 239 to 630 in very short order. So flows tripled, and that amount of water running down the, the, the sides of the canyon uh, moved a significant amount of sediment and debris downslope and into... Uh, into the South Platte itself, there are 20 notable sediment slides in Cheeseman Canyon. Those sediment slides are primarily composed of decomposed granite gravel, and that's pretty much it. It's the stuff you see in the bed of the South Platte around Deckers and Cheeseman. Uh, it's not an unnatural material, but it's certainly a lot more than the river's used to getting. Following the rain event, Denver water dropped the flows from... 6.30 all the way down to 7.35. <clears throat> so when those flows, dr they dropped those flows because uh, essentially there's too much water, there's too much water in the system. And they're worried about the downstream reservoirs. Additionally, there's apparently supposed to be some rain that was coming in the next coming days and they wanted to sort of uh, fend that off. They didn't, they didn't want any extra water in the system. And now they've bumped them up back up to 172 last time I, uh, last time I checked. So I took in my camera and my drone, walked about two thirds of the of Gill Trail, uh, didn't make it all the way up, but I walked the large majority of the trail and used the drone to sort of uh, scope out the rest of it, but saw 20 sediment slides of varying sizes. All right, so 20 sediment slides reached the South Platte. That means decomposed granite gravel dumped into the river. Does that occur naturally? Yes. Is that granite gravel uh, always in the river there? Absolutely, yes. Do uh, you expect that to be deposited in the river on a regular basis? No, this is like a once every 100 years, once every 50 years kind of event. Uh, and so it's notable for that reason. The sediment plugs associated with those big slides have already started to sort of creep downstream and uh, if the slide didn't fill in um, some of these pools and riffles and runs, the uh, creep of that, the down, downstream transport of those sediments is starting to fill in those riffles and runs a little bit more. Additionally, the Gill, Gill Trail was, uh, was impacted. There were several sections that uh, were rilled out or uh, had some flow that made the, made the trail uh, pretty bad condition. Um, but what I walked, and I didn't walk the entirety of the lower or the upper, but uh, what I walked, I didn't see anything that was impassable. So uh, the trail certainly has been damaged, but it's not impassable. I didn't see any notable fish kill or any fish kill for that matter <clears throat> um, during my visit. Uh, I did see fish starting to adjust to their new normal. So um, there were fish rising to blue wings. There were fish sort of, you know, cruising those runs, swinging back and forth, eating emergers, eating uh, nymphs, and they were elevated. And I saw a fish sort of, you know, cruising the shallows, rummaging through that gravel like they like to do sometimes in the slower water. And I also saw fish in pools. So they were, uh, the water was clear. They were happy fish. They seemed to be adjusting to their new normal, which is certainly encouraging um, because I know immediately after the, 
uh, rain event. There were no fish to be seen. And uh, the next day it was still a little bit off, still off color and still no fish to be seen. So fish are there. They seem to be eating. Blue wing olives were hatching. That's encouraging for sure. So number one, I haven't heard about any fish kill and I didn't see any fish kill. That's amazing news. We haven't seen any significant fish kill as a result of this flash flood. So populations are safe in that regard. What we should be probably most concerned about going forward is the fact that this large, these large plugs of sediment have been deposited into the river and they are going to slowly but surely... Um, progress downstream and start filling in the pore space of the substrate of the bed of the river. And that could potentially choke out uh, some of our aquatic inverte invertebrates that are, the fish depend on so much. So uh, basically a, a long-term impact could be aquatic invertebrate populations decreasing and potentially biodiversity decreasing. So the amount of the number of species might decrease and the amount of those species might decrease. So that would be bad. And uh, it would take some time for the river to recover from that. So trails will need to be rebuilt. And I know U.S. Forest Service and Denver Water and Trout Unlimited were working together to identify places where they could uh, fix some of the trails before the storm. And so now I would assume that trail will need to be maintained some uh some upgrades some fixing will need to be done and the, perhaps there will be some volunteer opportunities and if we hear of any of those opportunities we will pass that information on uh so that's that's the trail the trail needs to be addressed for sure uh additionally what would be preferable would be denver water introduces a flushing flow for let's say three days and moves that sediment downstream and has it distribute distribute into uh more preferable water types so basically there's already gravel throughout the riverbed of cheeseman and into deckers um the gravel you know those flushing flows would move that gravel downstream and it would deposit in places that it would normally deposit uh which would hopefully clear out some of those uh, really aquatic insect rich riffles and runs where uh, the substrate should be a certain size and you don't want those big angular uh, you know, big angular gravel to be sort of working itself into pore spaces and potentially um, you know impacting negatively impacting the aquatic invertebrates so that's what needs to happen a big flushing flow will it happen right away absolutely not i would imagine you know there's a lot of as we've mentioned there's a lot of water in the system and uh, they're not, you know, the reservoirs are full. They're not just going to be able to move that water downstream. There's water rights, all that stuff. They're not going to do a flushing flow, I would imagine, in the summer. Probably, I would imagine, not in the fall nor in the winter. But you never know. They could, you know, work things around and uh, and make it happen. But I would wouldn't. Save my, I would save my breath and I would expect it to come in the spring. Hopefully it comes earlier than that. All right, so a question we've gotten a lot of is, is Cheeseman Canyon fishable? <clears throat> and as I mentioned, we saw plenty of happy fish rising to blue wings, eating, eating emergers, you know, swinging around, eating nymphs. Is it fishable? Like technically, absolutely yes. Should you fish it? That's a different question. Um, in my, you know, in my opinion, I'm going to defer to people like Pat Dorsey, who, I mean, he's been in fishing in that Canyon for longer than I've been alive and Pat's giving him a rest. So I'm going to give him a rest. Uh, doesn't mean you, you have to give him a rest, but I'm certainly going to follow Pat's lead in this regard. Um, you know, technically it is fishable. Uh, you know, those fish have probably uh, have, you know, seemingly adjusted. They will adjust to flows pretty quickly. You know, usually like a couple days after like a flow bump or, or drop, they'll adjust and be in their new feeding spots and holding spots. Um, but you know, this is a pretty significant change to their environment and, uh, it's potentially 
uh, additional you're adding additional stress by uh, fishing for them. So you know you can certainly fish for them. Uh, that's up to you. You're all able-bodied, uh, smart individuals. So uh, I'll leave that up to you guys and where your moral compass takes you. I'm going to follow what uh, Pat says, and uh, I'm probably going to leave it be for a little bit until uh, Pat says it's okay. Call me a fanboy, but, you know, I'm going to listen to Pat. What's wrong with that? Does it rain? Yes. Does it rain a lot sometimes? Absolutely. Does it rain a lot and move sediment into rivers? Yes, erosion happens. Correct. Is this like a once every year event? No. Is this a you know, once every 50 year event? Perhaps once every 100 year event? Yeah, perhaps. Like It's a rarer event to see this much sediment dumped into a river. Um, is the river going to recover? Yes. Will it hopefully... Has it hopefully already recovered and adjusted? Yeah, hopefully. And it, you know, hopefully it, you know, only takes a couple days, maybe a month or so to recover. That would be optimal. Could it take longer? Could it take longer to get back to where it is? It was before the landslides. It could. And it depends on whether or not the aquatic invertebrates are impacted in a significant way. Uh, and so that's a time will tell kind of thing. We, we won't know until we'll know. Um, the fish don't didn't seem to the fish population didn't seem to be impacted i mean obviously fish can be you know picked off by a variety of things and a dead fish can be certainly scavenged by any number of uh animals or um birds but i didn't see any dead fish i did see quite a few fish feeding so hopefully that's a good sign for the future not only for cheeseman canyon but also Let's be real, like if uh, angling pressure reduces on Cheeseman Canyon, that angling pressure is going to go somewhere else. So, you know, for those of you who maybe aren't connected to the canyon as much as others, I personally, if I was one of those people, I would want Cheeseman Canyon to get back in shape as quickly as possible uh, so that angling pressure was more evenly distributed and it wasn't as much of an you know, an issue you're not getting anglers moving around. You know, people like fishing Cheeseman Canyon for good reason. It's a, a really healthy wild fishery. So um, that's the update. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.